2019 World Cup. Um, mm -hmm. I remember your, your post-match uh, press conference there was very raw and emotional, um, obviously, as it, as it would be. How Which, you, after the England game? After the England game, yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, what, was, what were the sort of several weeks after, after that loss like, and how did you sort of come to terms with it over time? Oh, no, I think it was obviously very, like the ambition is to go there and win. And I think after making the final in 15, there was really only one thing for me personally, as far as my own coaching to, you know, and I wanted to stay on as the coach of Australia, obviously it's the pinnacle of coaching, you know, for, for us here in this country. Um, but really to ask about having another term as the coach, I would have needed to improve and to improve would have meant, you know, there's only one place to improve. You finished second last time, you had four years, you've got to finish first or it's not good enough. That's my own standard that I set. So it was pretty straightforward as far as, you know, I knew that if anything else but winning wasn't good enough, um, the competition. So, uh, it was, yes, very disappointing um, and you've got to deal with it, but you've got to own it and, you know, like a quarter, we made a quarter final. Uh, it's the pool games where, you know, the real action was, was there happening. Same as in, in 15, you know, you do the work in the pool, you get to the, where you need to be in the draw and then you can work it from there, you know, so... Um, we just didn't have the the that extra bit of um, uh, I suppose energy to be able to get over the line in that game. So if we talk about the Wales game, you know, we even scored more tries in the opposition. We still just didn't have that little bit to get over the line, and that cost you. In, and that they're the, the mark, they're the signals you see, you know. So. The, it was pretty straightforward for me afterwards. So you know, I knew what I'd be doing, even if we lost the final. You know, so the 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 track back for me, you know, and I've said this before, was was really back to the year before. You know, that's where that's probably where I made uh, you know some compromises in my decision making that cost us at that time so and I sort of knew it in the back of my head but in the back of my mind but I just tried to overcome it yeah you know, I tried to beat the obstacle and um, along with the team and obviously all together and we just weren't able to do that so it was pretty normal um, that you'd be very disappointed but understand what you know what I was able to what I had to do afterwards and then in the months afterwards you know I was yeah you know, I just spent a lot of time reflecting on what I could do better what, what I as a coach could do better. How can I put myself out of my, because I want to improve as a coach and as a rugby coach and as a leader and do better. And I define those separately uh, and do better. And so I started, I had probably had, I did some work with a, with a few people from overseas about my own personal approach to things. Um, some of the techniques I could use myself and then um, I, s I started to do things which sort of put us outside our com out, put me outside the comfort zone. Um, obviously, I went and coached a bit of league and got involved in that. I did the thing with Argentina, which was um, different again. Like they were the first times I'd ever coached where I hadn't been in charge. So they were different experiences totally, and they were very good for me to start to put some of the things I'd discovered over that six months sort of after the tournament, um, start putting it into place, you know, to start to improve and be better. Can I ask you what you, you said to the team, maybe in the dressing room straight after that full-time or something? Oh, but it was... After the... There was not much point talking to anyone after the, the whistle. Well, I think that was done and dusted then, right? But we spoke before we left, to, you know, we got everyone in a room together before we left because you got to leave pretty much almost straight away after the taunt, after you're out. And um, we spoke about the fact that, about the, the two or three things that for me and, and I think for the players when they, when they heard it and we discussed it were fundamental in why we didn't go any further and that they should remember those things because um, many of you will be playing in the 23 World Cup and to win that World Cup, you need to learn this lesson. Like, 
that's ultra important. If you're gonna go through that, you gotta take what you, 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 know, you didn't get right personally, not externally, not, oh, that guy could have done this or that guy could have done, what could I have done? So me as the coach and the players as individuals, what were the two or three things that they could have done to contribute so that we were powerful enough to win those pool games, win that and move on in the tournament like we wanted to. And we had that discussion behind closed doors and, and, um, and with, the, with the intention that, you know, for those guys that are going on and playing the 23 World Cup and perhaps even the 27 World Cup for some of the younger fellas that were there, uh, that they'll lessen, that's, that's something that they'll vow to improve before they change or build on before they get to the next World Cup.